Thank you. Prepare ye the way. Thank you, choir. Thank you, kids. They can just be left there. You can leave your pieces of cloth. That's part of the story. The crowds threw down their palm branches, threw down their cloaks for Jesus to walk upon. Happy Palm Sunday to all of you. And God be with you. Whether you are here for the very first time, or whether you have been here many, many times before, whether you are joining us on site or online, you are welcome here. You are welcome here in Christ's name. I'm the Reverend Brianne Swan, and joining me in worship leadership this morning, so many people. We have our music director, Stefan Ermel. We have Marie and William. We have our choir. We have our tech crew at the back, Gray and Isaiah and Amanda and guest tech Theo. We have Marion, who's prepared communion. We have our greeters, Susan and Diana and Betty and Anne. So many people, so many people participate in making worship happen. And we are so grateful for all of your time and your efforts. Today is our first Come and See Sunday of 2024. If you have arrived here this morning, again, either on light or online or on site, through the invitation of a friend or a family member, we want to let you know that you are especially welcome and that we are delighted to meet you and welcome you this morning. You should know that we do not start every service with a parade, but we do try our best each service to engage with what it is to be spiritual beings navigating this often aching yet beautiful world. If you are wondering where the washrooms are, you will find all gender washrooms through this door all the way to the back wall and through this door just around the corner. If some larger print bulletins would be easier on your eyes, we do have some 19-point font at the back. If you are wondering when to sit, when to stand, and which book to sing from, there are no hard rules, although if you're using a different book than the rest of us, that could be interesting. But a general rule of thumb is always, always follow the choir. Can the choir put up their hands, please? Follow the choir. They know what's going on oftentimes more than I do. Later on in the service, we will be celebrating the sacrament of communion. Those of you who are joining us online may wish to have some elements, that something to eat and something to drink, on hand. We practice an open table here at East End United, meaning that anybody who wishes to participate is welcome to come and partake. Before we begin, there are a few things that this community names as important to acknowledge whenever we gather. The first is that we are an affirming congregation within the United Church of Canada, and what that means is that we are public, intentional, and explicit about our embrace and affirmation of everybody, no matter their sexual orientation, gender identity, ability, culture, any of the markers that have been traditionally used to divide and say who is in and who is out. We don't always get it right, knowing that we are working toward progress, even as we acknowledge that we are a work in progress. However, we know that the diversity found within this community is part of what makes us whole and holy. Throughout the service, we also want to remember and acknowledge that this land, this land that we are situated on, that long before there was a church here, long before what we now call Toronto existed, this land has been tended to and cared for from time before memory. And in particular, we acknowledge this as the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabek, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. And we know that reconciliation is not simply something we do out of shame for things that have happened in the past. Reconciliation also deals directly with the present, the here and now, 
of how we relate to our Indigenous siblings. And so we try to live out the call towards reconciliation so that it might not just one day be a hope, but actually a lived out reality. We have a few announcements before we move into worship. The first is that we start with a parade and we end with an annual general meeting. Yes! There is a, our an AGM is happening after the service today, but not before you are fed. So to everybody who brought food for the potluck, thank you very much to Anne and Mary for coordinating. Thank you for making sure we are nourished, not just spiritually, but physically, before we get down to the work of what it is to be this particular community. We are coming up on Holy Week, and there is lots happening. Monday, Thursday, we'll be at our Glen Rhodes campus at Gerard and Coxwell. It begins at 5.30, and there will be a traditional ceremony of foot washing, followed by a service that includes a simple meal of soup and bread. Good Friday morning, here at 10 a.m., we are participating with our ecumenical friends from Danforth Community Church, St. Barnabas Anglican, Riverdale Presbyterian, and Holy Name Catholic, with our traditional Good Friday ecumenical service. Both Danforth Community Church and East End United are, are doing their pieces of the service here. So Danforth Community Church starts at 10, our piece starts at 1025, and then we will move after that to St. Barnabas. In the evening, please come and sing with Stefan and I all the songs from the 90s that, maybe not all the songs from the 90s that we know and love, there's too many every single one. We're going to be there till three. It's going to be great. No, but please come to the Factory Girl. We're going to be telling the story of Jesus's passion through the songs of bands like Nirvana and Radiohead, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sarah McLachlan. I have a playlist that's going to be sent out today, so if you're like, I don't really know those bands, that's okay. You can study ahead of time so that you are well familiar with the songs before joining us at Factory Girl Friday at 7.30 p.m. And although we don't do a Saturday night vigil here, Metropolitan United Church, which is at Queen and Church Street, does do a Saturday night vigil. My husband, Jason Myers, is one of the ministers there, and I will be doing a service with him at Metropolitan, and that service starts at 9 p.m. Um, and goes for about an hour. And then next Sunday, the hallelujahs are back, and we rejoice with the risen Christ for our traditional Easter Sunday service. So there's a lot going on. Hopefully, we will see you at one or many of the events, the events happening through the week. But before we kick all of the sort of Holy Week passion stuff off on Thursday, you should come out to Glen Roads tomorrow night at 5 p.m. for our monthly community dinner that Nourish puts on. Is there anything else I should say about... It's going to be fun. Come and eat. We will feed you. And I don't know what Robin's announcement Robin has right now, but... The uh, Danforth Grow Hope is growing. You've heard that announcement already. Uh, Jan's been mentioning a couple of weeks. The fundraiser at Church of the Resurrection is April 14th after church. So we leave here, head over there, and shop. But before then, if you can donate anything, art or financial skill, household objects that are beautiful but no longer needed at your house, please let me know and we'll make a contribution as well as being shoppers over there. Many churches are contributing to their, their fundraiser. That should allow them to buy an extra acre or two or three. So keep growing. Thank you. And with all of that, I invite you to shake off the pieces of the week that you want to leave behind in this time. Tenderly hold the things you'd like to keep and center your bodies, 
Take a deep breath as we move into our call to worship that is printed in your bulletins. We love a parade. Jesus has arrived, the party can begin. Everything is going so well. The crowd is on our side. We'll be free. Maybe this time love will win out. Let us come together to explore this love. Wouldn't it have been amazing? Lining the streets as the light of the world came into town? Doesn't it feel amazing knowing the light is here with us now? Hosanna, Hosanna. We celebrate this light, this present light, in this sacred time and space. And we sing now, He came riding on a donkey, Voices United, the Red Bound Book, number 124. be seated. And let us pray. Living Christ, 
example of peace. You rode into town on a donkey. This, this is how you proclaim victory. Gently, humbly, turning the ways of war on their head. We often desire to fan the flame of your ministry, calling healing victory, calling loving presence victory, calling undoing the ways of empire victory. Come, Holy Spirit, fan with us the embers of love. We ask for your presence in the name of the one you named beloved. Amen. Morning. We're reading Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. Now, when they, went, they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her, Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them, put them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. like to invite the children, young at heart, to come on up. So this is a piece of artwork. That, so face this way first. This is a piece of artwork that we as a congregation have been working on for throughout Lent. We started in February with a blank canvas and we added the paint. No, don't look at it. And then we added some, some patterns and then we added images and words. And last week we added um, some lino cut stamps. And this has been a long, long process. And so I'm wondering, when I ask you to turn around in a moment, what is the very first thing on the canvas that jumps out at you? Okay, ready? One, two, three. What's the very first thing that jumps out at you? This, I think, we got the mic on. Can you describe it? Um... A uh, woman praying, I think. Yeah, meditating. praying, meditating. Yeah. What about you? I looked at the candle. The candle? Right here. Yeah. What is it about the candle that jumps out at you? It's just bright. It's bright. And it, and it, I just, and it's like right there in front of my eyes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and ha what jumped out for you, Simon, about the woman? First thing I saw. Just the first thing you saw, yeah. fair enough. Joel, what's, what part of the picture do you like? <laughs> this, this one? Or these, these two pieces? Yeah. yeah, the words have and and then forward. That's cool. I have been drawn to this word here. Every time I walk by it, because I kind of, I come in in the morning and I walk by and I come walk over here and then I go through the, the back door there to get to my office. And this is the word that keeps jumping out at me. Can you read that word? Flourish. 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 Because I'm wondering what it means for a community to flourish. You think you know? Isn't that like thrive and grow? Yeah, to thrive, to grow. Uh, it kind of like means to grow as a community and like get big and yeah. strong. Let them do the sermon. This is, a, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so it's my hope for this community that we can flourish. And this is something we're going to be talking a little bit more in the Easter season. But when I'm thinking of flourishing and growing, I'm thinking like growing deep in faith and growing um, in the way that we can spread love into the world and the ways in which our community functions and, and is together. And so as we move into Easter, we're going to be talking about joy and we're going to be talking about flourishing a whole lot more. But I'm wondering for now if you guys can help me with something. We need to get this canvas over right into the center in front of the steps. Do you think you could help me with that? Easy. Okay, we'll see. Come on up. We can come up this way. So do you think we need to separate this, or could we do it together, kind of just holding the canvas to this? Because they're not attached. So can you each grab a piece? We got it? All right. This is how a community flourishes. We work together. Thank you, Joel. Oh, gosh, Joel, you made all the difference. Okay, we're good. All right, right here. All right. There we go. There we go. Thanks, friends. Yeah. Look at that. It's so pretty. So, Pino, we need to figure out a place we can hang this up somewhere in the building, okay? All right. So... Up till communion, I think you're going to go with Miss Susan and then come back up in a little while. Okay, so have a great time in Sunday school. May you be blessed as you worship and learn about God. Bye. 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 Joel, your shoes are fantastic. <laughs> so, where are we? Is it the next reading? Oh, it's a hymn. We're singing. And once again, we sing. See, the, the choir knew what was coming next, and I got lost. We are singing again. More uh, Voices United number 352, Lord of the Dance, and we are singing only verses 1 through 3.
Matthew 26, 1 through 5. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. I invite you to pray with me. Holy and loving God, may the words from my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts gathered both here and at screens this morning be pleasing to you. Amen. We are a people of story. And perhaps today of all days, Palm Sunday, where we hear about Jesus entering Jerusalem to shouts of joy and hope and hosannas, the power of our stories becomes very, very clear. But before we get to that story, first I need to tell you this story. It's a story that I have permission to tell. I will get that out there right now. I do have permission to tell this story. It's a story that begins on the very first nice day of spring when my son Isaiah was three and my younger son Simon was one. We lived on Ashdale Avenue near the Glen Rhodes campus close to Queen Street. It was a beautiful day, a stunning day. Winter was over and it was time to celebrate. So I piled both kids into our double stroller and set out for a long walk towards the lake in search of ice cream. These were the kind of excursions we lived for, ice cream and time at the park. A few blocks from our house, we started to come across something large, fuzzy, and very, very still. As we got closer, I realized it was a raccoon, and it was very dead. I'm always sad when I see dead animals on the side of the road, and had I been walking by myself, I would have probably done something called the city to have them come and pick it up, find someone to move the poor thing to a place with less foot traffic. But I wasn't alone. And so my first instinct was to turn around or cross the road so Isaiah and Simon didn't have to see the carnage. But before I could do that, I heard Isaiah's sweet little voice speak up. Look, Mama, that raccoon is sleeping on the sidewalk. Shh, don't wake her up. Now, it was fairly obvious that this raccoon had met a violent end. And I could have left it. I could have just said, yep, funny that, and went on with our day. But I thought about our old man, Cat, who probably only had a few years left with us. And I thought about my father, who had only recently been diagnosed with cancer, and we were waiting to hear about his prognosis. And so I thought perhaps having a conversation about a dead raccoon might be the gentlest entry into a conversation about loss I could possibly hope to have. Better a dead raccoon than our beloved family pet or a grandparent. 
And so I took a deep breath. Isaiah, honey, that raccoon is not sleeping. That raccoon is dead. And Isaiah went quiet for a moment, pondering this. He'd watched movies before where the characters died. I mean, every single Disney movie features an orphan or two. But for Isaiah, the solution to all of this was really quite simple. Kiss her better. Pardon me? (laughs) Just kiss her better, Mama, like you do with me. And staring at that bleeding, broken raccoon, my heart cracked right then and there. Because, of course, no matter how powerful or how healing my kisses are, I cannot fix a dead raccoon. Honey, that raccoon is dead. And dead is forever. And then we went over what happens when people and animals die. Their heart stops beating, their lungs stop breathing, and their body stops moving. Isaiah was concerned. So together we felt his heart, his lungs, his body. He did a little dance. And we assured ourselves that he was indeed alive. And then we did the same with me. And this was all developmentally appropriate stuff, but it was not lost on me how a celebration of ice cream on the beach had suddenly shifted to something far deeper. And he still didn't understand why I wouldn't kiss the raccoon, why I wouldn't even try. And I finally had to tell him that mama's kisses can't fix everything. Mama's kisses can't fix dead. And that, I think, was the hardest part of the whole scene. Understanding that dead is forever is one thing. Suddenly being confronted that there are just some things Mama can't fix on her own. That is where the heartbreak lived. So here we are. We started our service with a celebration. We started with a parade and singing and Stephen Schwartz and cloths for royalty. Jesus enters Jerusalem like a rock star. And possibly he is entering Jerusalem at the same time Pilate is returning to the city to his own parade. However, if Pilate is also in town, his parade is a demonstration of might, of imperial strength. Jesus enters with the hopes and the dreams of his people paving the path before him. But a lot of things will happen over the next few days. Judas will betray his friend. The religious elite, some of whom have actually been trying to protect Jesus, will become nervous. Jesus and the crowds surround him will become too dangerous. And so in keeping with the circumstances, context, and time, the end result is torture and execution at the hands of the Roman state. A bleeding and broken man hanging from a cross, the cross. It is the crux of our story, and Christians have spent almost 2,000 years trying to work out the meaning of it all. Isaiah spent months, I mean literally months, working out his feelings about this dead raccoon experience. One day we went to the Ashdale Library and he asked if he could take home a book about raccoons. We couldn't find any, so we asked the library worker for help. When she found a book, Isaiah looked at it and asked, is this a book about alive raccoons? And when the library worker looked puzzled, he went on, because I really need a book about dead raccoons. So deep and honest 
was his three-year-old desire to make sense of what seemed completely outside his conceptual framework. How is it possible that my mama, who has always made everything better with a hug or a kiss or a tickle, cannot fix this raccoon? How is it possible that a God whose chosen people are aching can send their anointed one not to vanquish, but to a brutal and shameful death? We have reflected on a lot over the past six weeks of Lent, reflected on journeys of change. We've created this communal art piece together, the paint and the images resonating with pieces of us. We started with a blank canvas and now we have this, a visual map and record of the season. And now we are coming to the end. Holy Week. In preparation for this week, I started to go through the many books in my house and have taken account of the different interpretations of what this scandalous end means. There are just too many different understandings to name here, just so many books. Books written by authors who believe that the world and everybody in it was so bad that God needed somebody to die in order to pay for it all. Books by authors who believe that we had here a man with so much love and truth to impart that those in power felt threatened, and so they killed him. With two ministers sharing one house and more than a few retiring clergy friends, we have rather a lot of books. More books than we have shelf space for. So many authors writing so many books trying to make sense of the death of this one man. But then I found a very, very special book. It starts out, Once upon a time, there was a dead raccoon. And I was reminded of that conversation nine years ago and how much Isaiah had to work through and how part of working it out for him was writing about it. He wrote an entire series of stories trying to make sense of the death of this one raccoon. Before I would sing him a lullaby at night, together we would make up stories about raccoons. Sometimes they were alive and sometimes... They weren't. Because the whole thing moved him. The raccoon was killed. She didn't do anything wrong. But the world killed her anyway. It wasn't right. It wasn't fair. It must have really hurt. And Mama couldn't make it better. So he wrote about it to make sense of it, the gospel according to Isaiah. Now I'm willing to wager that most of you know that this is not where our story ends. And I promise next week's sermon will not be titled Roadkill and the Resurrection. Actually, now that sounds like a dare, I don't know, but. (laughs) But it is where we leave things for today. Jesus doesn't do anything wrong, and the world kills him anyway. It isn't right, it isn't fair, it must have really hurt. And his mama, holy or otherwise, can't make it better not in the way his friends want or expect. Thank you for sharing that story with me.
Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King famously wrote, true peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. We gather our offerings today, challenging ourselves to live out our virtues, even when that means the discomfort of conflict, even when we're not sure how to make it all better, when words and kisses aren't enough. For the God of peace invites everybody to work for the liberation of all. As we listen to the music Stefan will play, and as we gather our offerings, I invite you to reflect on the ways in which you might invest in this community which strengthens us, nourishes us, as we continue the work of being church in the world. May the work of our hands, the commitment of our hearts, and the contributions from our blessings of financial resources build God's dream of a healed and reconciled creation in us, through us, and around us. Amen. I wonder if someone might be able to grab the children. communion. Thank you. Again, a reminder that this is an open table because this is God's table. No matter how you come to us or what you're bringing here today, you are welcome 
here to come up and participate in this feast. The bread that you will be served is all gluten-free. The juice is 100% grape juice. And you, when you are invited to come up, you can come and make two lines. Both will be served through intinction, which means you take a piece of the bread and you dip it into the cup. And the pieces are large enough that you sh your fingers should not get in the juice. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we share a lot, but we don't want to share germs. And so I invite you to turn to your bulletin now. May the God who gives the handheld, sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's up here, yeah. May the God who gives us everything we need be with you. May God be with you so you lack nothing. Let us empty ourselves with the shadows within. May God fill our empty hearts with the light of love. Trust in God in these moments, for God is with us. We come to the one who saves us with love. You danced in the morning from the very beginning. Like wheat, you sifted chaos, and creation was formed from the emptiness. Days which break bright and clear, gentle breezes that herald spring, soft rain which nourishes new life. We were shaped in your image, and you longed to serve us with your love. But we cried for you to release death so we might welcome it with open arms. Time and again you sent prophets, women and men who sought to heal our grief with words of hope, to wipe the tears from our cheeks. Yet we refused to listen to them, mocking their words and insulting them. Then you chose to send your child, the one who would not let his faith fail him, but would follow you all the way to the end. With those who desire to feast with you, with those whose hearts are filled with nails, we offer our thanksgiving to you. And together we say, holy, 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 holy are, you, are you, God, God whose, whose heart, heart aches, aches with, with grief. grief. All, All creation mingles its tears with yours this coming, coming week. week. Have grace, grace on, on all who journey in the coming days. days. Blessed, Blessed is the one, is the one who, who stands by you, you through everything. everything. Have, Have grace, grace on, on all who seek to find peace in the coming days. days. Sorry, the bulletin's not clear. <laughs> Pause. Because <laughs> I have more to say. Daring to imagine new life for your children, God of holiness and hope. Jesus became one of us. Made in your image, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. He could have turned the corner every time he saw us, but chose to greet us with open arms. He could have forgotten us, leaving us alone in our foolishness. But he remembered us every day every time he could have hardened his face in judgment towards us but he chose to endure the passion being mocked and beaten being insulted and shunned being betrayed into death's hands and you couldn't kiss it better then the bullies of the world forgot him after his death but you raised him to new life and new hope for all through the coming week, we hold on to the truth that death is never, ever the final word. Though we fear to follow, we will. 
Though we wonder how Jesus endured it all, we proclaim this mystery called faith. And together we say, in every moment, Jesus knew you were with him. In the moment of death, Jesus committed himself to you. In the moment of resurrection, you committed yourself to him. And in the moments to come, you will commit yourself to us. We remember now our friend Jesus, who before his suffering earnestly desired to eat with his companions, the Passover of liberation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He also passed the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. And when you bring us home at the end of all time in history, we will join our siblings who have been remembered by you in every place, every moment, in serving you through all eternity, God in community, holy in one. Loving God, pour out your spirit on us so that we may know Christ in the breaking of bread and that in word and deed we may be channels of your love, peace, and justice in the world. I invite the servers now to come forward.
through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And I invite you now to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. It's not in the bulletin. It's in Voices United on page 921. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, it is so good to be with you in this time, this place, and space. And as we shift gears, as we move into this coming week, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the love of God dwell deep in your heart. May the Spirit enlighten your way. And may you go in the comfort of God's care. Go in grace and go in peace. Amen. If I could kiss it better than I would If I could make the earth move as it should I would hold you in my arms And protect you from all harm If I could kiss it better If I could kiss it better than I would Simply mend your broken heart now if I could I would keep you safe and warm Just to weather out this storm If I could kiss it better I know it isn't right, I know it isn't fair, I know it makes no sense not to see your mama's care, I know it really hurts, feeling broken and alone, and all I want is to kiss it better. If I could kiss it better than I would If I could make the crowd move as it should 
I would hold you in my arms as the world sounds its alarm. If I could kiss it better, then I.